Hi, this is Hunter the Honda Mackinnon, and last time I brought you a video talking about the voiced actors in the Monkey Island video game series, one of my favorite game series, and today I wanted to talk about the voice cast of my favorite cartoon show, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Yes, so He-Man actually had a very small voice cast, and not counting some random one-offs like George DiCenzo in the Sleepers Awaken, the voice cast of He-Man was regularly composed of only four and eventually five actors. And this is what I really wanted to talk about because I've been meaning to make this kind of video for quite a while. At the very beginning of the series, the voice cast only included the actors John Irwin, Linda Gary, Lou Scheimer, and Alan Oppenheimer. And one interesting factoid that, uh, that kind of weighs into this and also quite a lot of other cartoons from that era that had very small voice casts is the fact that in a lot of He-Man episodes you might notice that there are certain characters who may appear in the background but don't have any voiced dialogue. Well this is because of the limitations on voice acting that are enforced by the Screen Actors Guild or SAG. SAG guidelines dictated that any voice actor could only perform up to three parts per episode which meant that if the same episode for instance had Skeletor, Man-at-Arms, and Battle Cat having dialogue. That meant that whatever other male voices had to appear had to be done by one of the other two male voice actors. Or at the very least, if Merman happened to be around, he probably did not get dialogue because Alan Oppenheimer also voiced him. This is the reason why they eventually added another female voice actress into the cast, Erica Scheimer, the daughter of Lou Scheimer. But before we get to all of that, let's now talk a little bit about the man, the myth, the voice of He-Man, John Irwin. Now, you might be wondering why I'm using a black and white picture of him, but uh, there's a very good reason, which I'll get to at the end of his little introduction. So John Irwin began his acting career somewhere, around, somewhere about in the 1960s, and the picture you're seeing is actually from his brief reoccurring role on the television show Rawhide which is nowadays mostly remembered for its catchy theme song and for being one of the early appearances of Clint Eastwood. However, very early on in his career, Irwin found himself working for Filmation, specifically in their Archie cartoons. Most people might not remember this, but Archie used to actually be kind of a big thing. And even though the original Archie show only ran for a single season, by doing the voice of the character Reggie Mantle, John Irwin immediately put himself in the good books of the company and would be called upon to voice several more characters in Filmation cartoons in the next few decades. Until finally, in the 1980s, he landed his most iconic role as He-Man slash Prince Adam. Additionally, you will also recognize him as the voice of Ram Man, Beast Man, and Squinch the Widget, as well as some other random bid roles. Don't worry, I, I got away with youngsters. You won't need this. <laughs> you won't need anything! <laughs> Oh shucks, it's quieter than a flea's hiccup. Now one of my favorite little John Irwin tidbits is the fact that apparently John Irwin himself did not think that he was a good fit for the voice of He-Man because according to himself, he did not sound nearly manly enough to play such a heroic character. Which I'm not gonna lie, I would kill to have a voice similar to John Irwin's whenever he's doing He-Man. Because it's not just tough, it's also very reassuring. Eventually, Lou Scheimer, however, was able to convince Irwin to take the part under the condition that whenever He-Man spoke, he would have a little reverb added to his voice in order to allay Irwin's fears. It's time to forget your mistake. I know you can do it. Irwin had a considerably smaller role in the in the He-Man's follow-up series, She-Ra Princess of Power, although he appeared in quite a few episodes still as He-Man, because He-Man was pretty much a recurring support character on that show. But what I always found a little bit bizarre is the fact that Irwin never went on to do much more after his stint with Filmation. He would still pop up as a voiceover voice in a number of cat food commercials and even in small bits in various movies. But a lot of this might have to do with the fact of why it's kind of difficult to even find a good picture of the man online. The most recent one that you might see making the rounds is this picture, which, is, which was taken during the early 90s at some event. I'm not entirely sure which one. However, Irwin's co-star, Alan Oppenheimer, has mentioned the reason that why Irwin, for instance, doesn't appear in any official cons or such 
And, that, and this is apparently a combination of Erwin's personality, which is that he's just very shy and extremely private about about his goings-on, but also something that you might have noticed is that Erwin is a slightly portly gentleman, and apparently he really dislikes meeting fans because he's always extremely fearful that his physical appearance is so much at odds with the character that he used to voice. Now I know this sounds ridiculous to most of you, Erwin is such an iconic voice role that I think fans would just be ecstatic to be able to meet with him and, you know, just talk to him, I mean I would just kill to just listen to him talk. But you have to understand that Erwin started acting in front of the camera at a time when the industry was considerably more vain. In fact, it still kind of is. And I do have to imagine that that might have limited his acting roles a little bit. So it's important to understand that that kind of trauma doesn't just disappear overnight. However, Erwin at least has been very kind to fans in the sense that he has been signing fan mail for a very long time. He has been living in a retirement home for the past couple of years. Anyway, I really have always loved Irwin's uh, He-Man and Adam voice. Sure, just be yourself, old pal. You've got a lot going for you. Hungry, huh? Well, dig in. Even though it's kind of weird how well he does the kind of nasally annoying voice, and I do and I do have to admit that sometimes when he did the voice of the villains, it didn't always necessarily work the best way, but he of course voiced Captain Sticky Fingers, who did make my list of favorite one-off villains from He-Man. Next up we have Linda Gary, who was the voice of the sorceress Tila, Queen Marlena, and Evil Lynn. But it is too dangerous. This portal will vanish at moonrise. Hold it right there, Trapjaw! Mom, what was Earth like? I'm afraid you'd find it kind of boring, Adam. There are no giant green tigers or magical castles. Now is the time to finally open the gates of Grayskull! Elita Gary, I think, is one of the most unfortunately forgotten voice acting talents, because she was capable of doing pretty much any voice you could have asked of her. Anything from kindly old ladies to chain-smoking hags to spirited young women to two cute little girls, Gary just had an amazing range to her voice, which is the reason why she was pretty much hired to do all the female voices on He-Man. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, due to the SAG limitations, there were a handful of episodes where she was not able to do all of her four iconic roles, which is why occasionally one of her roles needed to be recast with a different actress, as I mentioned, Erica Scheimer, and almost always the voice that got recast was Queen Marlena's, which is why she sounds a bit weird in a few episodes. I think Adam inherited from me what we Earthlings call a sense of humor. Now, Gary had been a long-time Filmation voice actress already before He-Man, but I think the simple fact of how versatile her voice was is the very reason why she is one of my favorite female voice actresses. I'm always extremely impressed with any voice actor who is capable of doing such a broad range. And I think she even beats the pants off Alan Oppenheimer, who is admittedly the most talented of the male voice actors on this show. She would of course go on to voice m several characters on She-Ra, most notably Glimmer and Shadow Weaver, but she actually ended up having a pretty good voice acting career even after Filmation shut down. Some of you might know that her voice appears in a couple of Sierra adventure games, and she even managed to get herself into a couple of pretty important supporting roles in a few cartoons in the 90s. She had a reoccurring role on the Hanna-Barbera produced SWAT Cats, and she was actually Aunt May for the first three seasons of the Spider-Man the Animated Series. Unfortunately, one of the reasons why Gary is maybe not so well remembered is because she happened to die back in 1995. She was suffering from brain cancer at the time, but what actually killed her was actually heart failure, which probably developed as a result of the cancer. Gary, in my view, is very easily comparable to such great female voice acting talent as Tress McNeil, and I would even put her in the same category as amazingly talented voices like, like Frank Welker. So yeah, it has always been extremely sad to me that her voice acting career was cut so short, because she definitely would have had the jobs to continue voice acting for at least the next couple of decades. And next up, we come to Lou Scheimer, who probably had the most eclectic range of voices on He-Man, and of course, Lou Scheimer was also the executive producer of the show. Now, if I went into all the nitty-gritties of Lou Scheimer's biography, we, could, we would be here all day. I mean, I could make an entire video about him. So the most important things that you really need to know about him is that Scheimer was, of course, one of the co-founders of Filmation back in the early 60s. He was very integrally 
part of several of Filmation's biggest productions. In the 1970s, he even tried to make Filmation make, make the leap from animation to live action with mixed results. But his involvement in He-Man and the Masters of the Universe is the most notable because it has because it was pretty evident that out of all the Filmation productions, this is the one that was probably the most dearest to Shimer personally. Now, as for his voice acting, I'm going to be very blunt here and say that Shimer was clearly not the most talented voice actor. Even though he had been doing voiceover work since at least the mid-70s, it's also something that he wasn't particularly proud of, which is why you never see his name in the voice credits of He-Man. He elected to go by the pseudonym Eric Gunden. But some of the character voices you will definitely recognize from him are Orko and Stratos, and pretty much most of Skeletor's henchmen. Now, of his voices, I think his Orko voice was by far his mo greatest, because I guess Shimer was just not afraid to just kind of let loose with the character, which is why his performances were usually so great. Well, at least some of your tricks work. Well, back in the land of Trolla, all my tricks work. That's no back scratcher, it's He-Man's sword! Can you follow his scent? If I wasn't a poor little nobody, I could give her a real gift. Then she really liked me. Because when you compare this to whenever he did some kind of minor supporting role, he clearly stumbled a little bit with his voice delivery and sometimes struggled uh, to imbue enough emotion into his voice. His Stratos voice is actually kind of interesting because it's pretty much the closest to his normal speaking voice. And I guess King Randor also is pretty close. Catch me if you can, you flying freak! These gaudy trinkets? Come, I'll show you some real sights. The reason I need to clarify this, of course, is that just like with Orko and most of his Skeletor henchmen voices, Shimer was able to mask his biggest weakness as a voice actor, which is the fact that he didn't really have a very broad register. So instead, what he did was utilize voice synthesizers. People might recognize that Orko sounds pretty much like the Smurfs from, from Hanna-Barbera's competing cartoon. Shimer would use this same technology multiple times when voicing characters on He-Man and She-Ra. Now, Filmation started to run into trouble in the late 80s and would eventually be shut down, but Shimer never actually gave up on trying to make another He-Man cartoon happen. After the new adventures of He-Man ended in the mid-90s, he was actually involved in talks between Mattel and Dick Entertainment to get another He-Man cartoon off the ground. But obviously, either one or both of the parties were not really interested, which is why that never ended up happening. He-Man started to have its first real revival in the early 2000s, thanks to the Mike Young Productions and the He-Man cartoon starting to appear on DVD. Shimer got super involved with the fan community and even did a bunch of official commentaries on the American He-Man and the Masters of the Universe DVD sets, whereas us Europeans had to make do with James E. Talk. I'm kidding, of course. James E. Talk commentaries were actually really good. But obviously, I do like it when the actual creators of the show are, are giving commentaries on their own shows. Lou Shimer is also remembered very fondly by the vast majority of former Filmation workers because... Filmation didn't have an extremely tight hierarchy or anything, which means that people who were involved at any Filmation productions would, uh, would ultimately end up having very fruitful careers in the, in the American animation industry. That said, Shimer does get some flack. For instance, I've mentioned one of the show's best writers, Paul Dini, was not particularly fond of Filmation's script revision policies, and Shimer tended to have the final say on most things. Like I said, He-Man was kind of his baby. Generally speaking, I do find Shimer a very, very interesting character, even if he wasn't necessarily the best voice actor. And of course, unfortunately, he passed away all the way back in 2013, but he is definitely one of the immortal figures in the greater mythos of He-Man. Next up, it's Lou Shimer's daughter, Erica Shimer, who I already mentioned was the substitute Queen Marlena, but she typically got to voice quite a lot of different female characters throughout the show because, once again, Linda Gary was only able to do three voices at a time. Now, just like Lou Scheimer, I do have to say that Erica wasn't necessarily the best voice actress, but on her good days, she could deliver some really decent performances, and she has, for instance, a high number of supporting roles on She-Ra, for instance. Hey, this is Hanu from the future. Now, I really did not do Erica Scheimer's voice work justice in the original video recording. So here are clips from what I consider to be four of her most important voice roles on He-Man and She-Ra. There's Queen Angela, Frosta, Imp from She-Ra, and then of course from He-Man, Jeremy. There. It was that collar which prevented me from using my magic. 
But now that it is gone... Are you all right? Oh, couldn't be better. Help! Oh, Chief! You're back! Jeremy, this is Man at Arms. Don't you have a real name? My friends call me Duncan. That's not much better. However, I think one thing that does speak about the fact that voice acting wasn't maybe Erica Scheimer's true calling was the fact that she basically stopped after Filmation's closure. But Lou Scheimer has given Erica a lot of credit over the years on the fact that the female characters on the show didn't, didn't appear too helpless or useless most of the time, and I think that's actually kind of an interesting way to look at it. He-Man had a lot of great female characters, after all, and a great variety of them. And finally, we come to the immortal bonehead himself, Skeletor. I mean, Alan Oppenheimer. <laughs> Now, Alan Oppenheimer, I think, is not only one of the most talented voice actors in the entire He-Man and the Masters of the Universe crew, but he's also quite easily the most experienced. Oppenheimer has over 300 acting credits, dating back all the way to the 1960s, doing everything from television and film work to cartoon voiceovers, as you might know. Filmation was by no means the only studio he worked for. He's done a bunch of Warner Brothers Disney cartoons as well, and th which is why Oppenheimer ended up getting quite a lot of important voices on He-Man. Of course, most people know him as Skeletor, but I think his voice as Duncan, the man-at-arms, is also super important, and actually I quite enjoy this because it's actually very close to his normal speaking voice. He's also the voice of Cringer and Battle Cat, and as I already mentioned, Merman. That thing ate Tila's freeze ray like it was ice cream! <gasps> Let's see you chew on this! Go. Let's go, Battle Cat, to Castle Grayskull. What are we waiting for? Yes, and I plan to keep on doing so until Atelier is mine. Furthermore, even though Oppenheimer has already been retired for several years, he has actually continually come back to do more voice work. He, for instance, had small bit parts in the new CGI animated He-Man cartoon, as well as Masters of the Universe Revelation, and he actually did both Skeletor's and He-Man's voices in the Chip and Dale's Rescue Rangers movie that came out last year. And you might have even seen him on YouTube, because Oppenheimer really revels in the recognition that he gets for having done Skeletor's voice, and regularly appears at various cons to talk with fans, and seems to be doing really, really well for a man his age. Seriously, just check out any video with the guy, he's just a an absolute joy to listen to. So, that was the He-Man voice cast. So tell me if you want to hear me talk about the voice casts of other cartoons or video games or something else. Leave the suggestions in the comments down below. I'm Hanna the Hunter Macadent. I have the power, so can you.